in today's lesson, we are going to show you how you can count things by weighing. This approach is typically used when you're working with uh, large quantities of objects, such as grains of sand on a beach or molecules that are in a glass of water, things that you wouldn't normally be able to just simply count. So we use a different approach, and that is counting by weighing. To model this approach, what we're going to look at here is we have two piles of uh, coins here. We have On our left, we have piles of quarters, and on the right, we have a pile of pennies. Now, what we're going to do here is if we went to Google, we would find out that a quarter on average weighs 5.67 grams. Now, some will be a little bit heavier and some will be a little bit lighter, but on average, they're going to be 5.67. And when you work with large amounts, that average, um, that average is useful. So what we're going to do here is that let's say I took a certain amount of these coins and I placed them on my money counting scale that I have over here. Now, I forgot this guy, so I'll put him over there too. And I weighed them out on a scale. What would happen is that it would register a number, and that register should be some kind of multiple of 5.67 or at least close. Now, let's say that in this approach, when we put this on this imaginary money counting scale, we found out that it weighed a total of 1,088.64 grams. Okay, so that was the reading on the scale for all of these quarters. So what that is telling us then is that if we started off with this mass, so we go back to our chem slash approach, we have a total mass of 1,088.64 grams. Now, if we wanted to turn this into the number of quarters, what we need to do is find a relationship between those two things. And according to what we said on Google, we see here that 5.67 grams is the mass of one quarter. So chem slasher wise, we would have 5.67 grams for every one quarter. Now, if we did that, according to our chem slasher rules, the grams match up on the top and the bottom, so dimensionally they will cancel out and leave us with a quantity of quarters. And that's what we're going for. Now, if we run this in the calculator, what we would see is that this would give us approximately 192 quarters. So we would be able to guess here without actually counting the number of quarters and most likely we would be very close to that correct number. Now I'm going to take my quarters off the scale. I'm going to move them over here and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh the pennies. Now if I were to put those 192 um, quarters on the scale, we got a reading. But let's say that I put 192 pennies on the scale. So I'll move a few of these over, get the rest of the guys over here, move them over. I put them all on the scale. We should not expect it to weigh the same as the quarters for one simple reason, that the pennies don't weigh the same as a quarter. So my next question might be, all right, well, how much would 192 pennies weigh? Well, let's go with the same approach of what we just did. So we're going to start off with 192 pennies this time. Okay. And what we would like to do is we would like to see how many grams that would weigh. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our relationship and try to relate pennies to grams. And we can do that because as we see here, we searched it before, one penny is approximately 2.5 grams. So chem slasher approach says in that relationship, I should be putting one penny on the bottom. Now I know penny and pennies aren't exactly the same word, but they mean the same thing and they'll cancel out in the same way. We put 2.5 grams on top out of necessity because that's the only place it can go. And we cross out our two matching units and we would see that we would roughly get 480 grams. So we would expect our balance to read somewhere in the ballpark of 480 grams. Now technically if we want to get crazy with sig figs here, we should put a decimal point at the end in order to have a third significant figure. All right, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about counting by weighing by using regular objects. Please stay tuned for the next lesson on counting atoms by weighing. If you've had any difficulty with this lesson, please rewind it and watch it again so that you can be sure to do it properly when we move into the atom level.